Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I've got a cool number theory problem I want to share. I want to know how many primes are there of the form 4n plus 1. So prime numbers which are one more than a multiple of 4. Now obviously we know that there are infinitely many primes and apart from the first prime 2, all primes are odd. So that means that they're either one more than a multiple of 4 or three more than a multiple of 4. Um, so we're looking at the ones which are one more than a multiple of 4 and we want to know how many of them are there. Okay, so I've written out the first few, so 5, which is 1 more than 4, 13, which is 1 more than 12, 17, which is 1 more than 16, 29 is 1 more than 28, and 37 is 1 more than 36, and so on. Okay, we want to know how many of, the, of these primes are there. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so the solution is that there are infinitely many primes of the form 4n plus 1, and this is kind of expected because if there are only finite many, finitely many primes of this form, then that means after some cutoff point there are no primes of this form, so then all the primes after that point would be of the form 4n plus 3, but then that would kind of prove the twin prime conjecture, or it would kind of disprove it, it would then say that there are only finitely many primes um, which are 2 apart, because after that cutoff point any primes are at least 4 apart. So then there'd only be uh, finitely, many, finitely many twin primes up to that cutoff point. Okay, so the answer is that there are infinitely many, but of course we have to prove that. And the way I'm going to prove it is sort of by constructing, so take, showing that there's at least one, or show, uh, constructing one prime of this form, and then using that to construct another, and then using that next one to construct another. And all of these are form a sort of increasing sequence, so we know that they're all distinct from one another. Anyway, let's get stuck into the proof. What I'm going to do is uh, let n be some natural number which is at least 2 so it's not 1 it's at least 2 okay and I'm going to define capital N to be equal to n factorial squared plus 1 like so okay so doesn't really matter what this little n is but it's a natural number which is at least 2 and from that we're defining this capital N and what we're going to do is say uh, let P uh, be the smallest prime divisor of capital N. Okay, um, so it's the smallest prime divisor of capital N, but one thing we know about P is that it must be odd. Why is that the case? Well, little n is at least 2, so that means that little n factorial is going to be even, and thus little n factorial squared is also going to be even, so then when I add 1, that's going to make capital N odd. So capital N is odd, so that means that any of the divisors of capital N are odd. So in particular P, which is a prime factor of N, that's going to be odd, so it's not 2, and thus at least 3. So P is an odd prime. Okay, now what I'm going to do is show that little p must be of the form for N plus 1, and why would that complete our proof? Well, firstly, clearly P is going to have to be at least N, or P is going to be strictly greater than N. Why is that the case? Well, any number less than or equal to n is going to divide n factorial, and in particular then divide n factorial squared, but then if I'm adding on 1, it's not going to uh, divide the result. <clears throat> so if I look at this, this sort of right-hand side mod little n, this thing's going to be 0, but this thing's going to be 1, so that right-hand side is going to be congruent to 1 mod little n, um, so it's not going to be divisible by little n, unless, of course, uh, little n is 1, but that's impossible because we're saying that n is at least 2. Okay, so uh, P must be at least N, or at least N plus 1, I guess, but it's strictly greater than N. So if we can show that little p is of the form 4N plus 1, or I shouldn't use N, but it's one more than a multiple of 4, then this completes the proof, because then what we can do is just say, for look at N tilde to be equal to now P factorial squared plus 1. So a similar setup to here, but then if we can show that P is of the form, um, uh, P is a of the form 1 more than a multiple of 4, and it's bigger than n, then we can use the exact same argument here to find some, let's say, p tilde, which is greater than p, where p tilde is now of the form 1 more than a multiple of 4, and then we can repeat this argument inductively, and because we get that p tilde is bigger than p, we're going to get an increasing sequence of primes, which are 1 more than a multiple of 4, and then we're done. Okay, so that's kind of a long-winded way of saying that all we need to do is prove that this little p here takes the form we want. Let me clear up the whiteboard and we'll continue. Okay, so we have that capital N is equal to little n factorial squared plus 1. What I want to do is look at this equation mod P. Remember P is just the smallest prime divisor of N. So in particular, this left-hand side will be congruent to 0 mod P. 
So we'll get that 0 is congruent to n factorial squared plus 1 mod p. And then this, of course, just means that n factorial squared is congruent to minus 1 mod p. Now remember, p is an odd prime, so that means that p minus 1 is even. So p minus 1 over 2 is a positive integer. So I'm going to raise both sides to the power of p minus 1 over 2. So on this left-hand side, I'm going to get uh, n factorial squared, then raised to the p minus 1 over 2. But then, of course, the 2 there and the half there will cancel. So this guy will just be n factorial to the p minus 1. And that thing there is going to be congruent to minus 1 to the power of p minus 1 over 2. Oopsie daisy. Now, uh, by Fermat's little theorem, um, remember that we have that a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p whenever um, a and p are co-prime. So their greatest common divisor is 1. Um, so this guy here, if we can show that n factorial, so if we let a equal n factorial, if we can show that n factorial and p share no common factors, then we can write this left-hand side as just 1. But it's kind of obvious that uh, they share no factors because remember, p is strictly bigger than n. So that means that n factorial is just a product of integer, positive integers less than p. And thus, it will sh none of those factors will share, it will, will be divisible by p. And thus, um, their greatest common divisor is 1. In other words, for a prime number p to be a uh, co-prime with another number, which is just a product of integers, which is what we have here, it's equivalent to saying none of the integers in the product share a factor with p, and that's kind of obvious because each of those integers are less than p. Anyway, this guy here is congruent to 1 mod p, so we can write that. So we have that minus 1 to the power of p minus 1 over 2 is congruent to 1. Now. Remember that p is a prime which is odd, and it's so it's at least 3, but we know that any odd prime must take the form either 4n plus 1 or 4n plus 3. So it's either 1 more than a multiple of 4 or 3 more than a multiple of 4. Okay, so if we suppose for contradiction, so suppose for contradiction p is of the form, let's write it as, just write it equal to 4k plus 3. So it's 3 more than a multiple of 4. Well then if we just look at this thing here, p minus 1 over 2 then, is just going to be p minus 1, which is 4k plus 2, then divide that by 2, so that's just going to be 2k plus 1, but then minus 1 to the p minus 1 over 2 would then be equal to minus 1 to the 2k plus 1, but clearly 2k plus 1 is odd, so minus 1 to the odd would just give us minus 1. So then we get that 1 is congruent to minus 1, and the only time that's possible mod p is if p equals 2. And we know that's not possible because p is an odd prime. It's at least 3, so it results in a contradiction. And therefore, p does not take this form. And thus, we have that p is of the form 4k plus 1, which is what we wanted to show. OK, so it's got a little bit messy over here, but we've shown the required result that p must be 1 more than a multiple of 4. And then, of course, like I said before, you can use sort of the recursive argument to generate another prime, or show that another prime which is the smallest prime divisor of this guy factorial or squared plus 1, um, then to generate another prime which is bigger and is of the form 4k plus 1, and then you're going to generate infinitely many. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this fun number theory problem. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.